Hey, everybody. Good morning. So people are getting married. That's cool. On July 21st. Woo! That's a good day. July 21st. What was that, Susan? That was my birthday. Thank you. <sighs> Do you have birthdays? <laughs> Days of birth? On your birthday, do you ever wake up thinking, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do today? Do you ever say that to yourself? On my birthday, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. I'm going to wake up to the sound of music. My wife and children will flood me with kisses and food and presents, and then they will leave me alone <laughs> for the rest of the day. My wife says to the kids, we're doing something very special for your father today. What are we doing? We're leaving. <laughs> so the other birthday was yesterday, and uh, because my birthday was yesterday, and I wanted to do exactly what I wanted to do, I thought at the beginning of the week, wouldn't it be lovely? Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be beautiful? Wouldn't it be perfect if I could plan this talk early in the week and then just kind of let it ride? for the rest of the week, so I wouldn't have to worry about this yesterday because I take this really seriously. And it seems that I don't sometimes, but I take this extremely seriously. I want to be good for you. I want to wake you up. I want to shake you and teach you and remind you how beautiful life can be. But I want to do that when I want to do it. So <laughs> on Monday, on Monday I said to myself, hey, Let's not fool ourselves. That's a great topic. And all of a sudden, these ideas, these ideas just started flooding out. And the ideas not only flooded out, they flooded out in order. And I was like, oh, that kind of looks like a talk. They'll laugh right here. Then I'll get deep right here. And then they'll be silent. And then they'll laugh again. And then we'll get deep again. And then they'll cheer. <laughs> and then they'll hug me one at a time on the way out with that look in their eyes like you changed me today <laughs> so what I did was I took those ideas and I put them in order and I took a walk around the block because I like to walk the talk so I'm walking with the ideas what are you doing to me? you're throwing me off I'm on a roll I'm on a roll you're ruining I didn't expect this you gotta tell me the thing so I, I walk the talk, and I'm going through these ideas, and I'm, I'm like, yeah, I got some ideas. I got some ideas. This is going to be great. They'll laugh here. They'll silence here. They'll talk here. They won't talk here. But it just didn't feel right, you know? I was going through it, and they're great ideas, and that's funny, and oh, that's sexy. That's, that's some sexy theology. But, <laughs> but it just didn't feel right to me. But it was only Monday, so I was like, you know, it's fine. It's Monday, I have all week, I'll, I'll, I'll finish it by midweek, tops. So I'm out there Tuesday and I walk again. And I'm going through it again and I'm just like, oh, it just doesn't feel right, these ideas. These are not the ideas. <sighs> but it's only Tuesday, it's only Tuesday, it'll be fine. So I do it Wednesday, it doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel right. I still have the same ideas, laugh, silence, funny, silence, hug, all the same ideas, but it just doesn't feel good. And then it's Thursday, it's Thursday and Sunday's approaching. I got my birthday, I'm not doing anything on my birthday, I'm not doing nothing. And then I have the Sundays approaching like a, like a wave coming over, just looking at me, getting ready, getting ready to crash. And I'm like, I got to figure this out. I don't want to work on my birthday. I got to figure it out. So I'm walking. I'm going through it. It doesn't feel good. And then, you know what happens? I see a vulture. Yes, a vulture. But it's not feeding on a carcass. You know, usually when you see vultures, they're feeding. There's like a bunch of them going feeding on a carcass. This one wasn't feeding. It was a large with the red-headed ones, the really big ones, and it flew right out of the bushes right in front of me and sat on the branch and just looked at me. <laughs> with its claws. <laughs> exactly. 
And it, it, it spoke. The vulture spoke to me. You know what it said? It said the same thing vultures always say. It's time. It's time. And what the vulture was talking about was death. It's time. All those ideas. <sighs> Going to chill on your birthday and do nothing. It's time to let all that go. It's time to let those ideas die. And then maybe, maybe I'll give you something to say. So I kept walking and I was like, you know, kicking stones. <laughs> but finally I was like, okay, the talk's not about that. I'm open. Come to me. And then on Friday and Saturday, light just floods through. And I'm like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to talk about. But that's just not a birthday. That's not just a talk. That's every day of my and your life. Because, you know, I could have said what I wanted to say. I could have finished it when I wanted to finish it. I could have taken this day off. I could have fooled myself into thinking I have some type of control over this. But in the end, it always crashes. In the end, I always have to let those ideas go to allow the process to take me. And that is life. It's not just a talk. We do this all the time. We try to control our lives. We say, this is how it's going to happen. This is how I want it to happen. It's going to be great, and it's going to go exactly like this. I'm not going to do anything on my birthday because, damn it, I was born. Oh, I deserve it. We do that with our whole life. We try to control it. We try to put it into a little box and say, this, this is how it's going to be. There are three parts of reality that we try to control. <laughs> there are three parts of reality that we try to control. We try to control the past. We try to control the future, and we even try to control this right here, right now. I had a conversation with someone at one point, and we argued, we debated, and she said this, 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 and I said, but this, 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 this. And she said, but this, this, city, this, this. And I said, damn it. <laughs> and so what I do is I take that moment, that memory, that idea of what happened yesterday, the week before, and I go over it all week long. And I mull it, I mull it, I mull it, saying, this is what I should have said. Oh, if I had said this. This is what I could have said. I could have said this. Oh, if I said this, she'd be like, pow. But I didn't, but I should have, I could have. So what we do is we take the past, which is just an idea. We take it and we turn it and we reinterpret it over and over and over again, saying, wouldn't it have been nice if it had gone this way? And that was just a conversation. We do that with everything, with, with work days, with birthdays, with vacations, with anything we do. We take the memory of it and we push it and we mull it and we change it thinking that maybe I can reinterpret it and change it and try to get some illusion of control over it. Tomorrow, tomorrow I will do something and the something I will do will go like this. We try to control the future through expectation. This is how it's going to go. Wouldn't it be great if it went like this? It'd be so nice if it goes like this. I'm doing a talk on Sunday, and when I do the talk, it's going to go exactly like this. And they're going to laugh. And they're going to cry. And they're going to laugh again. And they're going to cry. And that's exactly how it's going to go. 
We try to control the future through expectation. And not just tomorrow, not just the next day, not just the next day, not just the next week, the next month, the next year, not just yesterday, not just the day before, the day before that, the week before that, the year before that, our entire lives. We have it all figured out. We have our entire lives under control because we know what we should have done. We know what we could have done and we know what we should do and what we could do. We try to control our entire lives. Ooh, wouldn't it be great if my life went like this? Yes, next year, this is going to happen. Then I'm going to retire and I'm going to move to an island. <laughs> I can't afford an island. Someone's going to give me an island. And that's when my life is going to be good. It could have been good there. It will be good there. You see what we do? We take these ideas and we turn them and we twist them, trying to gain some type of control. They're just ideas. <coughs> the past is past. Maybe that's why they call it that. You can't change what has happened. It's already happened. It doesn't exist. The past, five minutes ago, is an idea now. It's gone. Five minutes ago, two minutes ago, wait. That moment that I was speaking about five minutes ago, it's gone. The past has already happened. You can't do anything about it. The future hasn't even happened yet. It's an idea. It's an idea that we twist and we turn and we try to get some type of control over. And once we have those ideas, oh, yeah, it's like hammers. I'm going to use the hammer of the past and the hammer of the future to build this moment because I know exactly what's going to happen. I've been here before. I've talked before. I've seen most of your faces. This is nothing new. I know exactly what's going to happen. I can use my idea of the past and my idea of the future to seek to control <laughs> this moment. Did you know we do that? We actually, tr who said yes? <laughs> you do, you know, you're listening. That's one. That's one. One down, uh, to go. We actually try to control the moment. We try to control reality by taking reality. This, this is the moment here, by the way. This is it. Wake up. This is it. We try to take this reality and squeeze it into the idea we've created with those hammers. We try to squeeze life into an idea. This is why you're pulsing all the time. This is why you have headaches. This is why you have anxiety and fear because you're trying to fit life into a moment. This is how it happens. I need a chair. I wanted that chair, <laughs> but I guess I'll use this one. So, you're here, it's now, and you're at a sacred service. Most of you have been here before. This shouldn't be too hard to control. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. So you're walking in. You know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to be music. Andy's going to talk. I'm going to see the same faces. No problem. Everything's going to go according to plan. It's in the box. So you walk in. And you sit in a chair. You've sat in this chair before. Same chair. Maybe you're sitting in the same position. I always sit in this seat. This is my seat. This is my seat. Nothing can be more predictable than a seat. Nothing easier to control than a seat. But something feels different, doesn't it? No. This is not the same seat. 
molecules in the seat have shifted. <laughs> the seat has changed. There's not the same person in the seat. I have changed. I come to this service every week. I sit in the same chair, but the chair feels slightly different because I am different. I have changed this week. So right away, I'm sitting in a chair. Nothing's happened yet. And already it's defying my expectations. If I pay attention to it, it'll feel completely different. But that's just a seat. I can ignore it. I can ignore that. It's just a seat. I know what a seat feels like. So you're in your seat. Service hasn't begun yet. Then people walk in. <sighs> but it's cool because I've reserved these two seats because I sit next to the same people every time. They're my bros, my bras. And um, we're going to have the same conversation. They're going to sit down. They're going to say, so, hey, what about this heat? And you're going to say, oh, it's so hot. And they're going to say, like, but it rains. I, like, I don't want to be here, but Andy's talking. He better be good. <laughs> so you're sitting next to the same people, the same people you sat next to last week, but something is different. You've changed. You've changed. I've changed. I'm not sitting next to the same people I sat with last week. I'm not sitting next to the same people I sat with five minutes ago. Look beside you. They've changed. These people are different. My expectation, my idea of sitting next to these people is completely unique and unable to control what they are actually like. I have an idea of what you're like. I think I know what you're going to say. I think I know who you are, but you're completely different. And that's just people in a chair. And then Cindy starts to sing. Oh, I've heard Cindy sing before. I've heard this song before. I don't want it to affect me because I have an idea about what it's going to be like. I've heard this music before, but it's different because Cindy's different and she's singing it different. And the words are hitting you in a completely different way. And then I start to talk. I start to snap and I talk about the same thing every month. Have you noticed yet? <laughs> Someone actually told me that the other day. <laughs> That's what's you. <laughs> I loved your talk. You know you talk about the same thing every time? Yes, I talk about the only thing worth talking about, the only thing I really care about. I talk about the same thing every time, but I talk about it slightly different because I'm different and you're different. There's no way you can predict or have an idea about how my words are going to affect you. <laughs> He didn't know I was going to do that. No. <laughs> There's no way you can predict how my words are going to affect you. Even if I was a hologram and you were watching the exact same thing every time, and then he's going to do this, and then he's going to do this, you still wouldn't perceive it the same way because I'm different and you're different, and this moment defies any idea you can have of it. And that, <laughs> Dusty will come back. What happened to the screen? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Think about how much is going on in this moment. Think about how much contributes to your experience of this moment. Atoms and molecules shifting and changing. The lights, the sounds, the heat, the rain outside, the tilt of the earth on its axis. The place the earth is around the sun. The place the sun is in the galaxy. The place the galaxy is in the universe. Everything is completely new. You don't know what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. Have you noticed yet? I have no idea what's going on, so I can't fool myself into thinking I have any control over this. I have no control over this moment because this moment cannot fit into my idea of it. This moment defies any explanation. Your life is completely out of your control. Your life is completely out of your control. But that's okay. That's okay, because I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. 
Someone's in control. Someone's in control. Right. Someone's in control. This is the moment where you come and bow and throw money at the church. <laughs> Someone's in control. Someone's in control. The two words we use most for this idea of God is omniscient and omnipotent. Omniscient means all-knowing. God is all-knowing because God is the awareness that experiences every moment of life. God knows because God is, and God is because God experiences. God experiences every atom, every tree, every star, every universe. God is the awareness that is aware of that. So God is all-knowing. That has nothing to do with control. God is omnipotent all-powerful because God becomes everything. God is every mountain and every volcano and every hurricane and every person who does everything and every star and every universe itself. God is that power. God becomes. God is omnipotent. That has nothing to do with control. Not even God is in control of your life. In fact, in order to life, in order to life, let's go with it. Let's go with it. In order to life, meaning in order to create life, God has to let go of control. The only way life can be here. The only way life can become what it is is for God to relinquish control and let go. God is the being that becomes, the awareness that is aware of. God pours itself into life in an act of love, but that love is self-giving, self-emptying, and completely out of its control. That's the only way experience means anything. You're experiencing this moment. That's what's great about it. Look, 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 look. This is it. You are experiencing this moment, and the quality of this moment is in that experience, is in that tangible awareness of, wow, I'm alive and I am free. Every atom, every molecule, every star is free and interacting and creating and destroying and living and dying and accepting. And it's all chaos and it's all beautiful. You know why you're here? I'll tell you why you're here. You're here because a star exploded. Do you think the star got up that morning and said, I'm going to explode? <laughs> That's what I want to do today. I have reached my, remember, remember my point? And I am going to explode. The death of a star, the destruction, the chaos of an exploding star littered the universe with the very I'm just trying to be scientific. Particles that made life possible. You are here because of an explosion, because of destruction, because of the interaction of free forms and chaos relating to one another and making things as beautiful as you. Look how good looking you are. Each and every one of you a completely unique free being. And the reason you're so beautiful is because you are free, because you're the result of these chaotic forms interrelating to one another. And that's why pain, that's why pleasure, that's why hurricanes, that's why cancer, that's why stars exploding, that's why small-mindedness, big-mindedness, that's why presidents and presidents and dictators and Gandhis and, and Jesuses and Buddhas and Trumps, all that is the result of freedom. You are free to experience your life because it is out of control and that's what makes it beautiful. This moment, this moment is an interaction, a relationship. This moment defies expectation. This moment is so amazingly sacred and beautiful because it is chaotic. <coughs> because each molecule because each sweat drop and each hair and each blade of grass and each leaf and each puppy dog 
each cat and each star is completely free. So what would happen, I wonder? I wonder. What would happen if we let go? What would happen if we stopped trying to control our lives? What would happen if the bubble of thought that is encasing this moment, what would happen if we let that dissolve? What would we become? Some say we would wake up. Some say we would see the kingdom of heaven. Some say we would receive moksha or liberation. So many words for it, so many words, so many ideas. But they all point to the same thing, see the wonder of it all, the brilliance of free, chaotic life. And then you may come and sit down. It's a brand new chair. It's a brand new booty. <laughs> on a brand new chair. Hey, brand new you. Brand new. Brand new you. I did this talk this morning. Brand new talk. Brand new talk. And man, would life amaze you. Yes, there's going to be pain. There's going to be pleasure. There's going to be sickness. There's going to be death. Stars exploding. But within that, there'll be an experience of life unencumbered, unheld down, unmanipulated, free living. I wonder what that would be like. Brand new chair, brand new experience, brand new tree, brand new footstep, brand new life. I think you should use your mind. I say that to my kids all the time. I think you should use your mind and think. I think you should use your mind. But I think you should use your mind in a way that enhances and not restricts. Instead of interpreting the past, instead of trying to control it, instead of saying what I should have done, what I could have done, what I would have done, Maybe I'll look back and just seek to understand. Not what I could have done, what I did, and why did I do that? What she said and why she said it. What my youth was like and why it was like that. I look back not to interpret, not to control, but to understand. And maybe I'll look into the future and I say, I expect nothing. I just intend. Because expectation seeks to control. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. It'd be great if, it'd be wonderful if, it'd be nice if I could. But instead, I look to the future with intention. The mind is what points the arrow of intention. I will intend gratitude, goodness, peace. Tomorrow, I will intend this. I will bring this to the moment, tomorrow. And in this moment, in this moment, right here and now, the mind only has one job. In this moment, here and now, the mind can only do one thing, and that is open. The only thing the mind can do to appreciate the beauty of this, the only thing the mind can do to serve you and humanity and life in this moment is open itself and accept the beautiful chaos of it all. It's never going to get it. It's never going to understand. But it can be free, and so can you. We tend to let our ideas dictate our experiences. We should let our experiences dictate our ideas. Because this is it. This is all there is. Right here, right now. 
And let's not fool ourselves. We are not in control. And neither is God. But you wouldn't want it any other way, believe me. Because that's life. That's all we got. That's all we got. I want you to pray with me for a minute. Oh, with the piano? Yay! Praying with the piano. I love it. No, it's good. It's good, good, good. Oh. When the piano's on, it just makes every word sound so good. I am just thankful. I am just thankful for this moment, here and now. I'm thankful for the chaos of life. I'm thankful for the interaction of molecules. I'm thankful for stars exploding. I'm thankful for aggravation. I'm thankful for pleasure, for all the experiences that are here for me to have only because I am free to have. So I step into my life with open arms. I open my mind up to the beauty of this moment. And when I find myself in times of trouble, I, I just say, let it be. And then I wake up to the sound of music. Always the sound of music. Let it be is the answer and it is our guide to a life of freedom and full experience. This is all I have and it's all I want. And life is good. <laughs>